Stay tuned now for Robert Young, starring in Father Knows Best, which follows this listening reminder. Tomorrow evening, you'll enjoy a host of entertaining radio shows when you keep your dial set to this station. For songs, you'll hear delightful quarter-hour programs by both Dinah Shore and Frank Sinatra. For comedy, listen to Bob Hope and Phil Harris and Alice Faye. For all-star entertainment, tune to the special program, To Your Heart. All of these and more are yours for the listening tomorrow night on the NBC Radio Network. Be sure to tune here for a most enjoyable, pleasure-filled evening. And now, it's Robert Young in Father Knows Best on NBC. Now, listen to Father Knows Best, transcribed starring Robert Young as Father. Welcome to Springfield and another half-hour visit with the folks in the white frame house on Maple Street. Sit back and enjoy life with the Andersons. Kathy, Bud, Betty, Margaret, and Jim, as the head of this typical American household, again sets out to prove that father knows best. person could make a real nice business out of manufacturing and selling a kit of handy aids for parents who are raising teenage youngsters. This kit I have in mind would contain such indispensable items as a crystal ball for determining the offspring's future, a book on mental telepathy so you can know what's going on in his mind, a dictionary of jive talk to facilitate conversation, and most important of all, a large economy-sized bottle of Aunt Sarah's golden elixir of endless patience. Yes, sir, a kit like that should be a cinch to sell, particularly to one Jim Anderson of 607 Maple Street. Why, you ask? Well, let's look into the den of the white frame house this evening. You'll see what I mean. Jim, are you in here? Yeah, just reading. What is it, honey? I thought you might be interested in this proclamation. What's this? I found it pinned to your daughter's pillow this morning when I went in to make up the beds. Which daughter, the little one or the big one? The big one. Read it. <sighs> to whom it may concern. I presume the whom in this case refers to us. I presume. To whom it may concern. I hereby give notice that henceforth and in the future I wish to no longer be treated as a child. <laughs> and that henceforth and in the future I shall be regarded as an adult. Hmm. Since I am now 18 years old, I feel I am entitled to a degree of independence. Entitled to it? She doesn't even know how to spell it. <laughs> Read on. A degree of independence not heretofore granted me by those whom it may concern. So, let it be known that from now on and hereafter, I do not wish to be told what to do and what not to do, since I am capable of knowing these things without being told. I am not a child. <clears throat> Signed, respectfully, your adult daughter, whether you know it or not, Betty Anderson. <clears throat> well, that's quite a document. What brought this on? I imagine it was because you told her to go to bed last night. Oh, no. That was it, I'm sure. Hmm, so she wants her independence. Oh, Mother, has Hello Father Janie called? I've been right here by the Hello Princess telephone. No calls. <laughs> Betty, your father and I have just been looking over your announcement. Well, those are the facts, Father. I mean every word of it. You think you can manage to get along without any suggestions or advice from us? Is that right? I'm definitely, positively, and absolutely certain of it. All right, we'll give you your chance. From this moment, henceforth, and in the future, we shall consider you an adult and treat you accordingly. Now, dear, let's not go overboard. It's a deal, Father. You promise now, remember. No more saying, do this, do that. Don't do this, don't do that. It's a deal, Princess. You're on your own. Ooh, you're a doll, Father. <laughs> I'm going to use the phone in the kitchen. I've got to tell Janie. Oh, Mother, I have a date with Don tonight. He's the president of the student body at school. Where's my blue dress? The last time I saw oop, it was... Oop, 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 wait. Now that you're an adult... 
princess. Uh, I mean, Betty. I'm sure you know where your dresses are. Yeah. Well, I can find it. <laughs> I wouldn't laugh quite so soon, dear. You know what usually happens when you make these deals with the children? Oh, don't be ridiculous, honey. She's in hot water already. Believe me, this is one caper where I'm going to have both the first and the last laugh. I hope so. But history is against you. Hmm. Oh, you'd better go up and shave, dear. The Williams may stop by this evening. Uh, all right. <laughs> Betty's going to be sorry she let herself in for this one. I wouldn't start counting your chickens if I were you. Do I have a clean shirt? In the closet. <laughs> Kids, get themselves into the silliest situation. Hi, Dad. Where are you going? Just coming up to shave. Why? Can I talk to you while you shave? Sure. Come on. What are you smiling about? Your sister. She gets some of the... What kind of a cyclone went through this bathroom? Betty was in here taking a shower. All this couldn't have resulted from just one shower. Towels on the floor, bath mat, sponge, brush. Margaret! Boy, she really tore the place up this time. What does she do when she gets out of the shower? Dry off by throwing the towels around the room? <laughs> Margaret! You'd better shave someplace else, Dad. I'm going to shave right here. I don't think he can find the wash basin. <laughs> uh, could that be it under those boxes of bath powder? Did you call me, dear? Margaret, look at this bathroom. Oh, dear. A major earthquake couldn't upset a room like this. Bubble bath, lotion, cologne, powder puffs, hand cream, face cream, nail polish, emery boards, eyebrow curlers, rouge, lipstick. And look at the bobby pins on this floor. It's a minefield. <laughs> well, what do we do about it? Where's Betty? Betty! She's downstairs talking on the phone for the 900th time today. Why are you calling her, dear? Why am I calling her? I'm going to point out to her. Well, she can't... She's an adult now, you know. Remember your promise? Yeah. Well, maybe she'll be more careful now that she realizes her responsibility. I hope so, dear, for your sake. Gee, uh, are you going to try to shave with all this junk in here? I'm going to try. <laughs> Powder and cologne in here is enough to make a person dizzy. Girls, they must be crazy. Now, where in the heck is my shaving brush? Hey, I bet I know. Betty had it in her room this afternoon. She was using it to brush the dust out of her compact. Oh, <laughs> oh fine. Come on, let's find the brush. Why, people in this house can't leave other... What happened in here? Oh, brother. What can a girl do that would tear up a room so completely? She was dressing in here. She's got a date tonight with Don Payton, some big wheel from the college. Clothes all over the bed, shoes scattered every which way, magazines, phonograph records, hats. It always looks like this, Dad, when she's getting ready for a date. I don't know what happens. But she isn't dressed for her date. When I saw her downstairs, she had on some old wrapper or something. I guess the guy doesn't realize how lucky a guy is to be a guy. Margaret! You want me, dear? No, stay there. I'm coming down. There's no reason whatsoever for a girl to have to leave things around. No sense of neatness. Jim, why are you roaring around the house? I'm not roaring around the house, but by George, that girl has got to be told a few things. Dear, she's not a child, remember? She's left a trail of, of everything you can think of from one end of the upstairs to the other. <laughs> Dear, I just haven't had time to straighten up, that's all. And doesn't she ever eat at the table? All over the house, empty milk glasses, plates with cake crumbs. Now, dear, just sit down and cool off. We spend our whole lives trying to teach her to pick up her clothes, keep things tidy. Now look at this house. Make the people in Tobacco Road look like the country club set. <laughs> oh, Jim, for heaven's sakes. The house just looks lived in, that's all. Lived in? By whom? Or what? Well, there's no point in fussing about it now. You can't scold her. Why I ever let her talk me into that deal, I'll never know. Dear, you weren't talked into it. You volunteered. All right, all right. For Pete's sake, what's everybody been shouting about? I could hardly hear a thing on the phone. Hmm. Betty, I think you... Now, Mother, remember? You made that arrangement with your father, not oh, with... Oh, no, the deal was with both of you. No more do's or don'ts, you promised. All right. 
Remember, Father. <sighs> I should have done this long ago. I wonder why I haven't heard from Don. If he calls, tell him I'll be ready about seven. How could he call? You've been on the phone all afternoon. Father? I just made a statement. Is it all right if I use the phone now, Miss Anderson? Oh, certainly, Father. Go right ahead. Thank you. Look at that outfit she's wearing, Margaret. It's it's frightening. <laughs> I'll admit it's not very glamorous. I, I don't know why she likes that old wrapper. It looks like something the Missionary Society sent back. <laughs> <laughs> that plus the curlers and the hair and that axle grease or whatever it is she puts on her face, it'd scare a man out of a year's growth. Well, she just set Bud back a year. <laughs> oh, stop acting like a goon, Bud. I don't know why you're so sensitive all of a sudden, dear. These things you're complaining about are not exactly new. She simply lost all sense of responsibility, Margaret. Sense of neatness. Why, if anybody else in the family walked around the house looking like that, she'd raise the roof. Yes, dear. Margaret, look what's on my desk here in the den. What is it? A banana peel and half a cupcake. Well, don't blame it on Betty. It could have been Kathy or Bud. Bud doesn't leave food around. He eats it. <laughs> Banana peel? It's possible. <laughs> well, make your phone call, dear, and relax. Now, this little item by the telephone. Did Bud leave this, too? What's that? Wave set. And again, it's surrounded by that ever-present accessory to feminine charm. <laughs> Bobby pins. <laughs> You're having your troubles today, aren't you, dear? They're not my troubles. I, I'm just concerned about Betty, that she hasn't learned to... Make your phone call, dear. I'll take the wave set and the cupcake and the banana peel. Let's see, I, uh, I was going to call... Oh, no. Hello. Betty? Yes, she's here. Betty! Yes, Father? Come to the phone and bring your lunch. It's Janie again. <laughs> <laughs> Margaret, this is fantastic. Oh, stop. The second, the very second we give Betty this independence she wanted, the whole house falls apart. Now we can't even get to the phone. Well, what would you like me to do, Mr. Negotiator? Any suggestions? Our daughter's character is disintegrating before our eyes. Well, what are you going to do? I'm not sure, but I can tell you this. I'm going to do something. Thanks, Father. Hello? Oh, hello, Janie. This is good for at least two hours. <laughs> Who answered the phone? That was my father. Oh, he's just fine. Now she can't even tell the truth. <laughs> <laughs> A father knows best in just a few moments. Monday means music on NBC. And next Monday evening, when you tune to this station, you'll hear Gordon McRae and Gladys Swarthout co starring in Friedrich von Flotow's immortal opera, Martha. Dorothy Warren Schold and Cesare Sieppi will fill the guest spotlight on the voice of Firestone as the program features the melodies of four musical comedy composers. Be sure to tune for the voice of Firestone and melodies that never grow old. Later Monday evening, listen to the Telephone Hour and its guest, mezzo-soprano Blanche Tebaum. Among Miss Tebaum's solos Monday will be the traditional American song, Juanita, and Because. It's the week's finest musical evening, Monday night on NBC. Be sure to listen. Well, this is not to be told around, but parents sometimes make mistakes. Right now, out at the white frame house on Maple Street, Jim Anderson is quite sure he made one. Yes, he feels he committed a rather considerable boo-boo when he agreed to give daughter Betty her independence and promise, for the present at least, to not allow himself the traditional parental prerogative of saying, do this or do that, or you can't do this or you can't do that. It's about an hour later now, Betty is upstairs dressing for an important date, and Jim is still fuming. Like this. She took advantage of me, Margaret. She lured me into making that promise just so she could forget everything we've ever taught her. Oh, nonsense. You can't expect her to toe the mark every second. Just because you found a few things scattered around the bathroom and her room was mussed up a little. A little? It looked like Martin and Lewis had gone through the place in high gear. <laughs> well, she's getting ready for a date with a new boy and she's excited. Is that any reason why she has to leave the whole house scattered with junk? 
Why she has to camp on the phone for hours on end? She's just thrown common sense to the four winds. All right, all right, all right. And that outfit she's wearing around here... She's dressing, dear. She just threw that wrapper on to come downstairs. Threw it on. That's the word for it, all right. It's like something left over from Halloween. We've tried to teach her to take pride in her appearance. She does, dear. I can't understand why she'll fracture herself to look like a doll when she's with some boy who hasn't sense enough to pound sand in a rat hole. <laughs> when she's around her own family, she doesn't care if she even looks human. Well, I'm not going to argue the point, dear. I'm not arguing. I'd just like to hear the scream she let out if anybody else walked around this house looking and acting like she does. In fact, maybe that's not a bad idea. Well, I have nothing more to say on the subject. It's your problem, dear. Yeah, give a child a little independence and they go hog wild. Who are you talking to, Dad? Nobody. I was just thinking. What are you doing? Nothing. Just came down from upstairs. It isn't safe up there. Old Betty galloping around like crazy, scare a guy half to death. I know what you mean, son. In fact, it's entirely possible that I may have to give your sister a little object lesson. I wonder what I did with that old tramp outfit I wore to the masquerade party a couple of years ago. It's down in the basement. Hmm. Stay here, bud. I'll be back in a minute. Where are you going? Down in the basement. Bud. What do you want, Mom? Where's your father? He went down in the basement after something. What goes on with everybody around here tonight? Everybody's acting kind of goofy. Uh, I know what you mean. In the case of one person, at least. Maybe it's the full moon or something. I don't know. Hey, Betty. Hey, Mommy. Betty sent me down to ask if she could borrow your compact. Which one? The one with the rhinestones. You're sure you won't lose it? I'll be careful. It's in my top dresser drawer. Thanks, Mother. I don't know what I came down for. Why didn't she holler in the first place? <laughs> <laughs> What'd you say, Angel? Nothing. Ask you to do something and then they holler anyway. <laughs> Weren't you going somewhere tonight, Bud? Well, I thought maybe I'd go over to Joe's. Howdy, and... ma'am. You got a bite to eat for a fellow. What's down on his luck? <laughs> Jim, there's a man in the house. Relax, honey. It's me. Oh, for heaven's sake. <laughs> hey, that's a good outfit, Dad. You look like a real bum. <laughs> Jim Anderson, what do you think you're doing? I'm going to show Betty what it's like to have someone walking around the house looking like something the cat dragged in. <sighs> oh, dear. I'm going to wear this outfit all evening. If she's going to parade around here looking like a rag bag, I'm going to do the same thing. If I can't reprimand her into changing her ways, by George, I'll embarrass her into doing it. Well, if that isn't the silliest thing I ever heard of. Nothing silly about it. I'm simply using basic psychology. She'll get the point. After all, one picture is worth a thousand words. You're a picture, all right. <laughs> Thank you, bud. I'm going in the living room now and scatter some papers around. Lie down on the couch with my feet up. Smoke a horrible cigar. Possibly crack some peanuts, the shells of which I shall scatter hither and yon upon the floor. <laughs> when Betty comes down, Margaret, send her in here. <sighs> oh, me. <laughs> What's gotten into Dad? I don't know, bud. Most of the time, your father is a fairly sensible man. But there are times like this when he does some of the weirdest things. Has anybody seen my doll buggy? Back of the couch in the living room. Who put it in there anyway? I've been looking for it. Oh, I should have told her Daddy, about... It's all right, it's me. Mommy, is that Daddy in there? Sure it is. Relax, Trim. <laughs> Daddy's just dressed up in a funny outfit. Why? Uh, I'm not quite sure. Uh, why don't you run over to Patty's house and play for a while? All right, but it didn't look like Daddy to me. This is a crazy house. Well, I'm ready, Mother. How do I look? Oh, you look lovely, dear. That's a beautiful dress. Like my hair this way? It's perfect. You look like you stepped right out of a picture. Where's Father? Oh, yes, yeah, speaking of pictures. <laughs> uh, your father's in the living room. I want to show him how I look. Uh, Betty, Betty, wait a minute. I shouldn't do this to your father, but he's asked for it. What do you mean? You'll find out. Just do as I say. When you go in there, you'll find him in a rather uh, unusual outfit. He's trying to prove something. Prove what? 
I don't know, but when you go in, act as if there's nothing unusual at all in the way he looks or what he's doing. Accept it as being perfectly natural. Well, I don't understand, but I'll do it. Remember, perfectly straight face. I'll try. Hello, Father. Oh, hello, daughter. I thought I'd come in and show you my dress. Like it? Uh, yes. Well, you look nice and comfortable. Uh... <laughs> what uh, happened to that, uh, that other thing you were wearing? I just slipped that wrapper on to come down to the telephone. Yeah. Well, I just slipped into these clothes to relax, you know. <laughs> Person doesn't need to put on airs around the house. I think you look charmingly casual. <laughs> All right, Princess. Your mother tipped you off, didn't she? What do you mean, Father? You know very well what I mean. I went to all the trouble to put on this get-up for a very definite reason. I wanted to illustrate to you graphically certain errors in your conduct, which, because of that ridiculous promise you talked me into this morning, I cannot explain to you directly. Oh, you object to that old wrapper. All right, I won't wear it anymore. A suggestion is permissible. And there are a couple of other things. I'm not saying do or don't, remember. I just want you to come with me upstairs. All right. I'm not going to criticize you. After all, I agreed you were an adult. We're just going to view a certain room in the house. I feel that what we will see there will convey my feelings much more eloquently than the words, which I am at present not at liberty to use. What room are you talking about, Father? Right up here. Shall we glance into the bathroom? The decor is most interesting. I don't see anything. Well, well what, what happened to it? Towels properly folded and hung on the racks. Bath brush in place. It looks fine to me. Who cleaned it up? I did. Oh. Well, uh, <laughs> there's something else. Uh, come over here. This I know will be interesting. Your bedroom. If it is possible to see over the... Uh, where is everything? I don't know what you're talking about, Father. It was mussed up a little while I was dressing, but I straightened it up in a minute. Can you see anything wrong? Uh, 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 is that, uh, uh, perfume bottle supposed to be on the dresser there? That's where I always keep it. Oh. <laughs> well, uh, take the, uh, downstairs, for instance. I noticed a while ago that there were a number of empty milk glasses, banana peels, part of a cupcake. Those were Kathy's. She and Patty Davis had a tea party this afternoon. Oh. Well, uh... <laughs> Jim! Yes? Will you come downstairs for a minute? Uh, let's go down, Father. Don will be here to pick me up in a minute. Jill? We're coming, Margaret. The reason I went to, to all this trouble, Princess, it just seemed if you were going to be an adult, as you insist you are, that, well, neatness and personal responsibility is so extremely important. I realize that, Father. Dear, there's something I'd like to speak to you about. All right, honey. What is it? When you changed into that ridiculous tramp outfit... Honey, don't mention this outfit. I put it on only because of a misunderstanding. It's not the reason that I want to talk to you about. You left the basement in a mess. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, did? All right, all right. So this wasn't my day. Oh, that's Don. Hand me my coat, will you, Mother? Well, obviously, this is no place for an old tramp. I'll just... Uh... Wait a minute. You stay here, Father. I want you to meet Don. Uh, Betty, no. Well, not in these clothes, Princess. I look like a bum. I don't care what you look like. You're my father. And after all, this is our home. You can dress in any manner you please. Oh, now, Betty, just slip out the door and... Certainly not. Why, well, I wouldn't think of going out with a boy that you and Mother hadn't even met. Betty, not now. We know that Don is a fine... No, bo I insist that you meet him. It's my adult responsibility. Well, I'm not going... Father, to... you come back here. <laughs> if those tramp clothes are good enough for the family, they're good enough for my friends. This is a cruel thing to do, Betty. You have it coming to you, Father. Oh, hello, Don. Come on in. Thanks, Betty. Gee, you're ready. That's wonderful. I'd like you to meet my family. Don, this is my mother. How do you do, Mrs. Anderson? Hello, Don. And Don, this is my father. Well, how do you do? <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, 
How do you do? Uh, how are you, son? I, uh, uh, fine. Isn't father cute? Yeah. My boy, your bewilderment at my attire is understandable. You see, I, uh... uh doesn't he make a beautiful bum? Yeah. <laughs> I suppose I should tell you why he's wearing that silly outfit. He and Mother are going to a costume party, and he was just trying it on. Oh! Oh, sure. Gee, I wondered. <laughs> uh, had you fooled there for a minute, didn't we? <laughs> yeah, you sure did, Mr. Anderson. I, I couldn't figure it out. Shall we go? Yeah. Uh, good night, and nice to have met you both. Nice to have met you, Don. Have a good time. Whew. Oh, that girl. Well, she certainly pulled you out of that one. <laughs> I thought she was just trying to embarrass me. Yes, dear, and she knew that's what you thought. I wonder when you'll stop trying to outguess the children. <laughs> Gee, that was a really thoughtful thing of Betty, making up that masquerade story. Father, I forgot to tell you. I'll be home around 11. Okay, Princess. Good night, you little boy father. <laughs> Good night, you grown-up daughter. <laughs> the Andersons will be back in just a moment. Every weekday evening, you'll want to set your dial to this same NBC station for America's number one comedy family, Fibber McGee and Molly. Fibber gets himself in and out of more jams than a little boy at the preserve cabinet, and it all adds up to a fun-filled listening. Be sure to make it a regular habit to listen to the mirth-quaking adventures of Fibber McGee and Molly every night. And keep up to the minute on the news of the world by tuning to Morgan Beatty as he reports the latest happenings from throughout the globe. Also a five times a week feature on NBC is One Man's Family, the intriguing adventures of mother and father Barber and their bewildering offspring. Listen to all of these programs every weekday evening on the NBC radio network. Well, it turned out to be a rather peaceful evening at the Andersons after all. Margaret and Jim and Kathy and Bud went to bed about 10 and all slept soundly. Well, all except one. Jim has been a little restless. Honey. Mm hmm It's 12 o'clock. Oh, I love it. Where's Betty? What are you talking about? There's a car parked out in front. I woke up just now and realized those kids are sitting out there. Oh, Jim. After all that big talk Betty gave me about being grown up and responsible. Jim, where are you going? I'm going to the window and call her. Betty? Betty? Is that you, Mr. Anderson? Yes, where's Betty? Well, she went in an hour ago, but I can't get my car started. Will you come down and give me a push? <laughs> uh, all right, Don. Oh, why don't I keep my big mouth shut? <laughs> Join us again next week when we'll be back with Father Knows Best, starring Robert Young as Jim Anderson. Father Knows Best is an NBC Radio Network production in cooperation with Cavalier Enterprises. In our cast were Helen Strom as Kathy, Gene Vanderpile, Rhoda Williams, Ted Donaldson, and Gil Stratton, Jr. Father Knows Best, based on characters created by Ed James, is written by Paul West and Roswell Rogers, directed by Arthur Jacobson and transcribed in Hollywood. This is Bill Foreman speaking. Tonight, play Truth or Consequences on the NBC Radio Network. Mm -hmm.